Welcome to the second uh, uh, webinar organized by the IUIS in response to the COVID-19 emergency. Our speaker of today is uh, Giuseppe Polito. Giuseppe is the scientific director of the uh, National Institute for Infectious Diseases in Rome, Italy and is also the director of the collaborative center with the WHO for emerging and re-emerging infectious diseases. So thanks to his role and to, to his experience, uh, Giuseppe has been the one who has experienced most all this situation in Italy. Actually, the first two patients with the COVID-19 were two Chinese tourists who were hospitalized and cured in the institute directed uh, by Giuseppe. And this was uh, the 30th of January. So a few months ago, since then, uh, it seems like a long, long time has passed. Uh, and uh, uh, Giuseppe will tell us all what he has learned, uh, what we have learned uh, from the scientific point of view, but also what we learned about the new role that science had to have in this situation and he has still to have. So not only to be science, learning about disease, learning about mechanisms, but also uh, advising the politicians and make very, very difficult decisions for public health and the life of all us, of all the, the people in our countries. So it's an honor for me to give the stage to Giuseppe Polito, who will talk about the global response of science to the COVID-19 emergency. Please, Giuseppe. Thanks, Rita, and thanks to the Frontiers for the, this opportunity to share with you some idea about the policy of science. In the, in the, few, in the few weeks, the, the situation about this disease changed totally. Uh, and, uh, the, I, I, I decided to give a, a very provocative uh, title uh, from a Babylonic to lunatic approach. From a Babylonic, since uh, there is a lot of confusion, and the lunatic as this uh, wonderful book by Charles Sainik uh, that uh, was a Pulitzer winner, reporting how the situation is confused and uh, how it's uh, difficult to manage a situation during, during an epidemic. In the, at the, on the 1st of February, the, the situation around the world was totally different. And no one considered that uh, in few weeks or in two months uh, will be very dramatic. WHO organized on 11 and 12 a meet of February a meeting in Geneva to de decide the global strategic agenda for research. All the information that were discussed in the meeting in Geneva now seems quite prehistoric. And if we consider that at the end of the meeting, the summary report that uh, uh, four major points, no one has at the moment uh, clear answer. First one was related to the transmissibility in different contexts and the problem how to assess R0 and the serious intervals and the environmental factor. We are still waiting for an answer. And, uh, uh, information about the severity and the level of case fatality and the good stratification by risk group. The third one was a selection of successful people, including the problem of why children are limited disease and if they can be really effective. And the last was the impact of intervention, uh, non-pharmaceutical intervention, restriction of movement, social distancing and face masks. This was discussed in three days, but in three days, uh, the results were very, very limited. A lot of perspective were discussed, but uh, was uh, very critical to have a, a global paramount. Now, every day, we have a look to this dashboard prepared by the Johns Hopkins, and now we have more uh, 2,500, 2.5 million of cases with about 190 deaths and the WHO changed the model to present the information and since the last week changed them with the cases reported in the last seven days. This is an effect of uh, 
the large spread of the infection across the world. If we consider that uh, this was so dramatic, this colleague, uh, Alberto Bardelli from Turin, in a, in a post in The Nature, uh, in, in a very nice paper, he said that uh, why a so small virus, uh, an RNA virus with 30,000 bases, uh, was able to divide all the continents? And this was was really was really questionable to decide the situation. And uh, he also discussed the problem in this paper why we we have so large difficulty with the small virus. So how we can decide to manage cancer that is uh, one hundred thousand times uh, of many ba uh, base pairs and the three at the three billions of the human genome. Now, in this agenda, we'll try to share with you some of the information. First one is uh, a lot is still unknown. When, when we consider, Friedrich Nietzsche was uh, considering that knowledge was, uh, was strictly connected with the black ignorance. And we are in a tremendous situation. First of all is uh, uncertainty. And the politician asked to have clear evidence-based answer to take uh, decision, but we don't have this specific information. And the media now are discussing uh, for lesser learned, but it's too early to have lesser learned. We don't know enough about this virus. We don't know about uh, antibodies. We don't know about infection. There is a lot. And when we will be back to the normal life, we don't know. The situation seems very close to the situation in the mid 80 with the HIV AIDS epidemic. And uh, maybe that lesson learned from the history of HIV AIDS could be useful to deal with, the, with the, this disease. Uh, the, the situation where we start to know, we start to know some situation. We have uh, information about the viral structure, viral dynamics, uh, but we have a very limited information about pathogenesis. We have a very difficult information on clinical presentation. We have still a lot of questions on the role of asymptomatics uh, as the prognostic factor, treatment, and immunity. We have very good information for, for the structure of the virus, and recently the structure of the virus has been redesigned has been redesigned thanks to comparison with a different structure. This is uh, important to uh, describe and also to identify potential uh, uh, targets of, of drugs. Unfortunately, these targets were multiple targets of drugs for, a, for all one of, the, of the, the, the life cycles have been proposed, proposed drugs. Um, but at the moment, the, no one single drug is really effective in this context. We have information on viral dynamics on the severity of, of uh, COVID-19. And recently has been published that uh, mild case of low, low viral load and rapid viral clearance. And if a viral clearance is related also with the, with the viremia, this is virus with a very limited viremic phase. This could be associated with the uh, higher case fatality rate. Uh, in the looking for solution, the, the cytokine storms has been, has been proposed. But we have a lot of unexpected presentation. I'm not sure that this was my last version of the presentation. Uh, originally, we considered that lung was the first uh, was first target of of the disease, and uh, but uh, we have a rapid cardiovascular information about cardiovascular involvement and uh, re relation between myocardial injury and the case fatality fatality rate, and uh, with impairment uh, improvement is uh, is associated with. Uh, improvement of, uh, uh, of uh, cardiac function with the reduction of tachyarrhythmia and uh, re resolution of the myocardial injury. And recently also some ischemic lesion 
uh, accurate scam collision have been have been reported here are some Italian Italian data. But uh, the thromboembolism was another game and uh, was very relevant for the prophylaxis in the management of this disease. But of course, patients in the in the intensive care normally use uh, use uh, are receiving a treatment for uh, are receiving a treatment for, to prevent the thromboembolism. And so it's very difficult to interpret, to, to have a clear vision about the situation of thromboembolism. Another aspect is that we have unexpected lesions. Here as reported the case with a typical presentation with the abdominal and the test starting with abdominal and testicular pain. If so, this means that virus is uh, everywhere. Recently, in my institute, the group of virologists identified the virus uh, in, the, in the tears. And the cases have been associated with the necrotic lesion in the brain and the Guillain-Barre, so, the same uh, as reported in, the, in, the, um, in uh, influenza, the same as been reported with the Zika virus, uh, most of the virus have, have this this uh, this problem and another aspect is uh, we if we compare this uh, situation we have the situation that is very close to the situation of dengue with the increase of il6 with the pia1 and we don't have enough information with the reduction of the tpa but both have prothrombotic and uh, uh, microvascular thrombosis uh, associated with the poor out and the role of uh, viremia as a uh, factor involved in cytokine storm, storms with the severe endothelial dysfunction, with the progressive uh, macro, uh, microvascular thrombosis uh, is associated with the case, uh, high case fatality rate. Here a lot, and uh, you can see the slides after the meeting, there is all the model for activation of progressive uh, thrombosis cascade. Recently, in two doctors that have been treated with the extracorporeal membrane oxygenation, the color of the skin turning from white to black. And this is another perspective, considering that uh, the interaction with the skin, with the skin cells, and, and the virus. This is really surprising. And uh, when it was published in the journal, in the, in the newspaper, people considered it was a joke. But this was not a joke. It was uh, absolutely real. Uh, this is not my last presentation that I sent uh, today. But uh, I have uh, uh, two papers have been published uh, in science uh, last night. Uh, and uh, I sent uh, another presentation with uh, with the model and involvement of lung and involvement of all the bodies in the presentation. But sorry, I will continue with, the, with this. An analysis of case fatality rate. We have in Italy a very high case fatality rate that is in green in old, in old people. But case fatality rate is very high everywhere in old people. And in some cases where the data are more, more, uh, more well studied, the, the analysis of case fatality rate is quite the same, the same in Italy. One of the aspects is the relation between age and, uh, and, uh, and the severity of disease. This is the, uh, in the mid 50 of the past century, we have a very low amount of a population over 70. And in 2015, we have a lot of people that are over 70. And if we compare the, pi the pyramid of the population between the 90, 70, 57, the was the, the, the age of Asiatic influenza, the structure in the world is totally different from the actual, actual pyramid of the population. Uh, this is worse if we compare the, the pyramid in Italy, that is one of the oldest country, or in Japan, that is another country with a very old population comparing with the Sud Sudan.
but recently have been proposed the mathematical model and statistic analysis to evaluate progression of COVID-19 with the change in case fatality rate with adjusted rate. What is important is that after the 180 days, also assuming different sets, the case fatality rate is expected to be the same around 3%. We have the large problem in numbers. We have a problem in numbers in terms of uh, all the data that we present today will be revised in the future. And we are providing understanding that cannot be based on the, on the available, available knowledge. And this is really to be considered to avoid to, to be totally assertive and share with the information with the citizens. We have a lot of difficulty with the diagnostic methods. Uh, and of course, we have uh, false negative results with the molecular with the molecular diagnostics, but we have also uh, false negative results with the, with the serologic with the serological tests. And uh, serological testing is not the panacea. And of course, we don't we don't know how the the, the antibodies tests are accurate at the moment. And uh, how be gleaned from the, the serological results, what happen at the community level, and if reactivation and the reinfection is possible. Uh, but uh, uh, recently, New York Times uh, estimated it's a really wild west for COVID-19 tests in the market, assuming that if in the States were tested uh, five, one million of people, we, we will have uh, only Five, 50, 000, less than 50,000 cases, but with 2,500 false negative and 47,000 uh, Of course, false uh, positive can be retested. In uh, uh, one of the indicator for molecular test, uh, for molecular tests is number of tests performed day by day. And this in green is Italy, and Italy performed across the recent time highest number number of tests. Yesterday night, two other data were published, and I I try unfortunately it was uh, was a mistake in the upload of that presentation. But uh, uh, yesterday, other data have been made made available on the, on the data on the test. What is important that at the moment we don't have a passport of immunity. And WHO, that uh, is totally linear and sometimes just a bit confused, uh, takes some time to make the, the, the sentence that there is no evidence for use of serological tests to say if uh, one is immune or protected from reinfection. According to the Imperial College, uh, the the number of, of uh, uh, the percentage of infected population is different country by country, and estimate for Italy less than four percent are positive, and but in other country like Spain is expected to have six percent or is within nine percent. This percentage can be related to the to the to the the, the level of. Uh, social distancing and look down. We are changing the model of healthcare. Uh, uh, recently, and uh, this was the model for uh, at uh, Washington Airport uh, 100 years ago during the Spanish flu. And now we are opening the other, other hospital in this same setting uh, in, the, in the exhibition area. To, to have uh, intensive care beds uh, ready in short time. Uh, in a parallel way, uh, way we have, uh, we have uh, a lot of technology from, intellig uh, from the artificial intelligence to, to for diagnosis or for management of patients. But in this situation, we have some critical aspects of ethics uh, to decide uh, the prioritization of the patients. 
and unfortunately for the, the mistake in slides, but yesterday two large two large papers have been published, one in science and one in JAMA, to discuss the problem of quality of information, quality of data, and how the data on the on the clinical trial are are not exactly as we expect. The confusion that has been created by an inappropriate use of, of, uh, of uh, uh, platforms at the national level and at the international level create a lot of confusion and some, and some difficulties. Another aspect is the rush publication. And the uh, rush publication is the determinant for, uh, for uh, uncontrolled data. Until three or four days ago, uh, the in WHO reported that more 6,000 papers were published in uh, indexed and in PubMed or uh, available in the repository. But uh, just one example on January 13, uh, colleagues from Germany reported the transmission from asymptomatic contact. But just five days later, New England. Uh, that was asked to refine the paper with an appendix reporting that the symptoms were not appropriately collected. And later, two months later, the test states that the carrier can be asymptomatic. So we must be really careful when we, we see we see the data. Now we have estimation of the asymptomatic proportion, and we have this proportion of asymptomatics by several studies. The, the case study of a, a cruise ship from Diamond Princess estimated that 17, 18% were asymptomatics, and in one, 33%. A random sample screening on just the 1,000 uh, 1, people in Iceland, estimate 43 percent, uh, and in in Vode, this uh, a, a village in the northeastern of Italy, 43 percent, and in a uh, U.S. military base basis, uh, quite 70 percent. So there is a lot of confusion. We need a specific methodology to evaluate, and uh, a very nice paper on the pregnant women uh, admitted for delivery estimated. Uh, 13 percent were were asymptomatic so we have a lot of dedicated call dedicated call created a sort of inflation of of information uh who starts to uh, is looking to have the role of a player on research uh, and who has been longly discussed if is in the mandate and uh, to establish international clinical trial registry platform or to be able to collect data uh, and launch also this clinical trial named solidarity for the for the, for the treatment uh, i like to to report as tony fauci have uh, um, in 1996 when protease inhibitors start to be available on the market uh, it's explained that uh, in the in era of unlimited aspiration and the limited resource, of course, uh, we must make clear choice to avoid dangerous dichotomy. And uh, another aspect is uh, to be research must not to be subject to political change. And of course, must be also not be uh, subject to political pressure. This is Tony Fauci in 205, reported in research who have a push and pull mechanism. One is devoted by supply, by researcher. Another one is demands, how do we have to respond to needs of, poli of policy, to the politicians and to marketplace. We need to balance. And the Frontiers offer a special service on this that is curated the list, curated the list open founding calls and uh, you can check uh, every day in this uh, in this list that is uh, updated to evaluate all the open call that is important and who has 
two calls already closed. One is SC, SC1 that is specific on coronavirus, and the second one is IMI with the first one with the 10 million, the second one with the 45 million of euro. And Europe prepared also a <coughs> platform that is named the Corona Platform that provide a lot of details on the open open research. And uh, the, the initiative of uh, Oaktown that will uh, run in uh, uh, from today to until 6, 26 of April to try to connect different player and all stakeholders uh, across the Europe to including the civil society to try to have a common common answer and the response when we start when we start to learn with the preparedness we must consider that at the moment we have a very critical aspects on preparedness according to the global health security no country or health system was fully prepared to manage an event like this but this is a it's a, it's the effect of human stupidity and the myopia of politicians since a lot of, of cases occurred across the year and the time documented all the requests to have a model of preparedness we need to change our perspective we are convinced that until now until now to invest in the individual patient care we need to move to public health and to community and to community care. Uh, uh, recently, the group of Mark Lipsic in uh, in Boston uh, identify uh, some critical aspect for our future. First, first is uh, evaluation of the risk of a second wave or recurrent winter time outbreaks. The second one is uh, how to have a uh, could, could be um, requested to adopt model for intermittent social distancing. Uh, evaluate additional intervention, including increase of uh, number of beds for critical care or effective treatments. And we need also longitudinal serological studies and maintain until for other four years the uh, uh, surveillance. At the moment, uh, according to time, we have uh, our frontline workers in the hospital and on the field. Healthcare workers are really heroes in in this in this outbreak. And to to finish, the the there is a special message by one of the most famous leaders worldwide. Unfortunately, we are in time of very few leaders and the very few leaders with the reliable aspects. But of course, the Pope in the Urbi and Dorby message on Eastern Day reported that it is no time of indifference, no time of selfishness, no time for division, no time for forgetfulness. This is the future. If we will continue in this way, we can be able to work in a different way. And the Pope, if... Uh, for Catholic and for not Catholic, we, are, we need to, to look at the future with a different perspective. First one is contagion of hope. This hope is the hope for the future, is hope for quality, is hope for ethics, is hope for research. And the Pope reported that we need to deal with this different model, different model of contagion. Going back to HIV AIDS, uh, we must use the experience with HIV AIDS to expand and explore three areas. First of all, area of cooperation. Cooperation between scientists and the civil society, between scientists and the politicians. The second one is model to investigate how to work with the high quality data and test in an appropriate way the systems. Third one is uh, to manage a situation in a very logistic and organizational crisis. We need, we need to capitalize the experience with HIV AIDS. Since uh, according to Tennessee Williams, 
we must try to uh, explore and try to infect each other with the excitement to living uh, because we we must be convinced that we have the strength to bear it thank you very much thank you very much giuseppe for your presentation that was very interesting and informative of course uh, all the uh, audience uh, you know you can make questions on the chat uh, and i will uh, now ask uh, uh, ippolito professor ippolito to answer to your questions uh, thank you uh, giuseppe so uh, a very uh, important question that people are asking and it is uh, uh it's always about uh, the high mortality in other countries compared to what has been reported in china and what has been reported for example also in germany uh, can this be due to the different type of viruses that are in different countries the different isolates can be more aggressive or less aggressive uh, thanks for this question and uh, i'm not sure that this is the at the moment we don't have enough information most is related to the age of affected population and uh, cofactors the cofactors play an important role at the moment there are very limited information about the genetic effect factors one of the factors that can affect the the survival is related to the uh, to the large use of ventilators uh, the large use of ventilators in old people, as Gattinoni reported more than 30 years ago, uh, old people connected with the ventilatory machine have a higher risk of death comparing with the people in the same situation. In the, in the, in the wonderful analysis that has been published uh, this night and uh, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in science, uh, uh, the, the, with, the, with, with the very nice title, A Rampage Through the Body, this indicates that uh, all, the, all, the, all the systems are affected. Since uh, we have uh, not just in the liver, and uh, I suggest to look uh, with this paper by Meredith Wadman published yesterday night in, uh, in, in Science, with, uh, with involvement of lung, showing that immune cells crowding uh, inflamed alveolus uh, during the attack of a virus uh, are diminishing the uptake of uh, oxygen and uh, of course you need the time there are people with large experience in the management of critical patients such as in Italy Antonio Presenti and uh, they worked with us uh, in Sierra Leone with emergency and the genostrada report that uh, we must give to the, to the patients the possibility to have time to repair this uh, this lung but if the risk to connect uh, to the to the machine are so high for all the people the case fatality rate will be very high the second is that all the people have a high risk for heart and the bloody uh, involvement since uh, for for also for uh, the, the the receptors of infections that uh, allow blood clots and heart attack and uh, a relevant inflammation, uh, this is the reason why the situation is uh, is so relevant. Older people are extensive damage, and this has been documented with the innovative techniques in a recent paper published with the data from people died at the Georgetown University in the US and reconstructed with the 3D model. The another important question is uh, um, the ACE2 receptor. Do we have information about uh, different polymorphism that could like predispose to a higher viral invasion? Uh, th there are at least three large studies worldwide, but this uh, is too early to have uh, information on the polymorphism and have not enough background on this uh, topic to be to provide uh, real good answer. Sorry. Okay. No, thank you very much. Um, the other question that many people are asking is. Uh, how many people should we really test? I mean, the real problem that we have is that there are a lot of asymptomatic 
patients that will transmit the disease. How can we uh, solve the problem? Uh, which type of test should we do? To whom? <laughs> Uh, 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 this, this is a large debate around the world, uh, and uh, in the in the recent days, uh, uh, the, the problem of the test has been discussed. Uh, for Europeans, uh, European Commission published uh, on uh, 19 the first guideline of available test uh, in Europe. Uh, at the moment, uh, we have a very uh, very few molecular tests available, and we need to perform uh, automatic automatized uh, molecular techniques and very good uh, serological test we hope that in the short time we will have standardized serological serological tests there is now another very important question in this uh, about herd immunity so how do we get herd immunity on uh, on against SARS it's very difficult you have shown that uh, in Italy for example but also in other country the the reality the number of people who have had the disease is very low so do yeah. we have to wait for the vaccine we have to, to wait for the vaccine but we have to wait also for more information about the level of immunity and the level of uh, herd immunity, since uh, there is it's too early to say this, and then the, we need to evaluate at the moment uh, the rate uh, of uh, people with uh, stable immunity is still too low. Okay. And uh, another question uh, repeatedly asked is, uh, why is the situation in Africa so different? Uh, do we have a different uh, immune system? Are only people much younger than us? What's the difference? Oh, thanks for this question. There are different aspects. First of all, first of all uh, in Africa there is malaria, and you know that uh, some, some contexts, uh, including uh, the low rate of uh, other infection. Second one, potential interference with, uh, uh, with other infection. Also, the interference between influenza and uh, between influenza and, uh, um, and uh, COVID has been, uh, uh, has been studied in just one nice uh, uh, study published uh, uh, recently in International Journal of Infectious Disease. Third one is uh, the, the, um, the aspects related to the possibility to perform a diagnosis. A uh, uh, number of countries have, uh, have the, well, um, very limited the possibility, but also in countries with the increased the possibility for diagnosis. Uh, for instance, in Senegal, there is large experience. It's one of the most large lab to do this. Uh, the, the data are confirming that the infection rate is still low. We don't know, but, um, but we need to investigate this. Uh, now the problem in Africa is, uh, is just a bit different. The risk that concern for COVID-19 we reduce the risk of access to other drugs uh, and including HIV we, um, with the possibility to reduce uh, the access of, the, of, of care. Uh, the World Bank is uh, stressing the condition that is a global approach to infectious disease. And in African context, we need to invest to prevent COVID-19, but without losing the success that we obtained with other infectious diseases. Okay, very good. Thank you. Uh, the other questions were uh, about uh, cross protection from other coronavirus. Does it exist? There is cross protection, or in reality, this is such a novel virus that we have to start from scratch? At the moment, there is no, no there are no information about the cross protection, and the studies on the cross protection are so relevant that we need to evaluate and to discuss in the future. At the moment, uh, this is totally new virus uh, and uh, there is not cross protection. Also performing uh, with other cross protection with, uh, with other corona, such as SARS-CoV-1 SARS or SARS and MERS, there is uh, not cross protection at the moment. Okay. 
uh, we have uh, now a couple of million uh, dollar questions uh, is uh, do we have some promising trials i mean about drugs do we, oh. are we somewhere no oh, thanks this is thanks for this question this is a very good question and this allowed to 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 uh, to discuss the problem of access to the treatment and uh, the confidence to the data during uh, an outbreak like this. Uh, last week, uh, JAMA published the uh, wonderful view, viewpoint by Jesse Godman and Luciana Borio, a both are friend of mine, and I'm honored to have, especially with Luciana, the, to discuss the problem with the effective treatment. We have a lot of data, and we have uh, also an unjustified pressure to start to start programs the, the recently as you see yesterday the the nih and the tony fauci warns against the drug that have been promoted by the white house and of course nid recommends that the doctor must not be use combination of treatment without evaluation of appropriate uh, without consideration of toxicity and at the moment according to the existing review no one single therapy has been documented to be affected but and this night was published in the newspaper uh, a confidential results that uh, that uh, first trial for uh, most promising uh, drug Rendesivir was had no effective on the on the on the patients. Since this Chinese uh, trial, and this has been uh, published uh, by WHO and posted by accident and immediately removed uh, when they identified there was a mistake on uh, about 250 patients, uh, 150 treated with the Rendesivir and 80 with the, with the placebo, that the deaths after one month, no, no single different with an early side effects. We need to consider, and uh, another, another paper published yesterday by Alex London and John recommend that we must conduct research without looking at exceptionalism. Since research must be considered as part of public health and part of response, politicians don't consider research as part of response and politicians don't like to be scientists that are critical, have a critical position and uh, Politicians like stupid person, they said yes. <laughs> and uh, and this, uh, this wonderful paper by, by Alex Lando reported that uh, in a crisis situation, expedited research is really feasible, but must be conducted in a real independent basis. As, uh, as requested in crisis situation, avoid, avoiding uh, individualism. Uh, evaluate uh, to uh, avoiding duplicative research, avoiding off label use, uh, avoiding unvalidated intervention, joining large protocols to combine the, the force to, to have real advance in individual and public health. I, I, I recommend that uh, all the clinicians that are very proud to be in TV start uh, a different way and not to have their own protocol just to say to the media or to be in tv but to try to combine the data in very ethical and appropriate way we have two more questions two more questions one very important question is what do you think about all the different vaccines that are in the process of being tested do we have any idea with which one will work? Would vaccine be useful? It's too early to say that the vaccine that will work. At the, mod at the, more, uh, at the moment, the, all the vaccines are running in, 
in the same way, but someone are, are more advanced. Someone started the already, already phase one on the humans and the other one will start this, uh, this phase one in the, in the next few months. But of course, the vaccine needed to be evaluated with appropriate research. And I'm confident that the research will have the success. We are not sure that the vaccine will work, like for other corona and the lighter for other respiratory infections. But uh, of course, this will, will, pro will promote a lot of research in respiratory infection that are still the first reason why people die around the world with infectious disease. Really, the two last questions. Mode of infection, how do we get the disease? Only through the respiratory ways and uh, dirty things or what, how? How do we get infected? Uh, at the moment, the transmission is uh, mostly through respiratory, through uh, respiratory ways. And uh, I suggest to have a look on the wonderful movie published by New England uh, to start the discussion if this is droplets born or airborne. And of course, all the scientific discussion is the, the, the transmission. But of course, virus uh, is uh, present uh, also in uh, uh, nasopharyngeal secretion and in tears uh, and uh, can be easily transmitted uh, and will survive. I'm not Trump, only President Trump <laughs> is able to say that they not we review papers uh, as yesterday reported uh, in, the, in the press uh, with the slides uh, that the virus will not survive in the surface and air, that ultraviolet light is really effective, that uh, warm and the humid condition are have a tremendous inhibitory effect, uh, and this suggests to do injection with the disinfectants. I'm not sure that we need very, very scientific information to move on. And the last question, uh, which is I uh, very difficult to answer, how do we get out of this lockdown? How uh, will we do this? Well, uh, how we will go out from lockdown uh, with, uh, uh, with the scientific evaluation of day-by-day -day data. Uh, without day-by-day -day data, we cannot uh, uh, control. Of course, everywhere, the politicians uh, have the goal to reopen the world reopening the world to start the economy. All of us are considering that the restarting of the economy is critical, but in safe conditions. Thank you very much, Giuseppe. This was very, very interesting. And uh, we thank you very much for what all what you said. And also because you concluded that now we did need real data that we have really to understand what's happening uh, and uh, we all will go to work. Thank you very much. Thanks Thank for you. you and thanks for people attending. Thank you very thanks. much. Thank you Thanks. to all of you listening to this Thanks. wonderful webinar. Bye-bye.